We're moving on to our partner presentation, deterministic telecom data in mobile advertising changes everything. Mr. Oliver Kanders, Director of Marketing and Market Building, Mozio, is going to be taking us through his 15-minute presentation. Oliver, all yours. So what would you say is the most powerful of reality that we as humans have? Is it touching? No. Because you can get a touch of something, but you will never fully grasp it, right? Is it hearing? No. Because we can have voices in our head, and I certainly have them a lot, and I know from experience that they are not always right. So is it tasting? No. But trust me, for a minute I was fooled because when I first came to India and I tasted the curry, I, saw, I thought that was the single truth in the world. But it's actually none of those. It's seeing. This is why everything is about eyeballs. Because, as you know, you will only truly believe something if you've seen it with your own eyes. So the video you've just seen, we took that today. Me and a colleague, we went out to the streets of Mumbai and we filmed some people and it wouldn't have been possible without seeing. If we would have blindfolded them, they would have never trusted us to take a video of them and agree that we would show it tonight in an award gala. So what about the eyeballs? Where are everyone's eyeballs in India? So obviously there's a lot of eyeballs running around through India all day, and we know that people are listening to the radio, they are going to the cinema, but the most striking thing and I'm always amazed by the statistic, is that people today are on desktop and TV as much already and in the future even more on mobile. So that's an amazing fact. And I have another one for you. So today we have 200 million smartphones in this country. By 2020, that's three years and a little bit less until we reach that, it will be 690 million. So that's incredible. So as you can imagine, the global mobile advertising market is developing in a similar direction, right? Right now we have $100 billion being spent in mobile. By 2020, it will be 200. So in India, this will be an even faster and more rapid and crazy development. Why? Because right now the basis of mobile we have is so small. I mean, this is mostly the US. And there's not going to be so many more smartphones in the US, but in India there will be. So it will be a big multiple of what we are seeing today. So you also have to know that while in India most media categories are still fastly growing, in the whole world most of them are stagnating, despite one, and that's mobile. So every nine out of ten new ad dollars this is a bit weird, are coming from mobile. But, you guessed it, there's a problem with mobile. And that problem is that in this entire big market space today, 65% of the entire advertising spend is owned by Facebook and Google. That means that 35%, they are still a black box. That means that 35% have to be shared by every single publisher, Times of India, every SSP, every ad exchange, every DSP, all those hundreds of players in the market. So what's wrong here? Because people are spending 74% of their time outside of Google and Facebook. So there's one single thing, and a few others, obviously, we've talked about content, we are talking about viewability, there's a lot of other topics as well, but one, one single thing that makes the whole difference that Facebook and Google have, but that's not available in this other black box that's currently 35% of the mobile market. And that's great data at scale. Data in mobile is lacking. Why is it lacking in mobile when we have so much data on the desktop. Because on the desktop, we have the delicious cookie. We place it everywhere. Every one of us is eating cookies all day whenever we are on a measure. 
But in mobile, it doesn't exist in that way. We have no way to trace users on the mobile phone, such as on the desktop. That means we have to deal with the few crumbs of data that we have. And that's a shame. So like any story of a company, this story starts within the head of someone. So six years ago, this story connected to the personal life story of our founder, the founder of Zeotap. I'll come to Museo later. This is Daniel. So Daniel was working at Vodafone in Germany, and he was working for the executive board. And they told him, hey, Daniel, we have 5,000 retail locations in Germany. That can't be good. Please help us to figure out which ones of those we should close and put up somewhere else and where we have gaps and where we are cannibalizing ourselves. And he said, well, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I'll figure it out. And they said, well, we've got a little gift for you. And whenever I think about the moment where Daniel for the first time opened that big treasure chest of telecom data, I imagine a small boy opening a big giant box of little stones and kind of seeing the potential of what could happen if he was able to put all of these Lego stones together. So in that very moment he had access to the data, he knew that he had to make it accessible also to other industries. Because of course it's very powerful for any kind of decision making. But six years ago the time wasn't ripe. So Daniel moved on and he found himself in Berlin in the advertising ecosystem with AppLift in Berlin, which you might know also from India. And then three years later, he realized this crazy imbalance in mobile that Google and Facebook have such a big share, and he connected the two points. He thought, wow, we need data, I know where to get it. And despite everyone telling him that it's impossible to make a contract with a telco operator, because obviously they are big organizations, it takes a long time, he went out and he was unstoppable. And most of all, he knew the one thing he had to solve, because obviously, Telco operators want to get one thing right. They want their data to be secure and they want to treat privacy with care. They don't want to hurt their, their subscribers. So what we at Zeotap did, and I was with the company from the very beginning, so we spent one and a half years building a technology that became best in class in global privacy management and anonymizing data and making it accessible easily to the advertising ecosystem. And secondly, developing a system that retains the value of the data and makes it impossible to steal it. So we even went as far as building a privacy council globally with 20 people in the board, one of whom is Anne Kavukian from Canada. She is the inventor of the privacy by design principle, a lot of former VPs from telcos for regulatory, and a lot of current VPs. We also took an, a US telco operator, and together we hacked our own technology with the white hat hacking firm as a referee until we had closed the last holes. And the moment we had finished the technology, telco operators started signing our contracts and did what they had never done before. So as of today, two and a half years later, we have 200 million deterministic telco data profiles in the world, in Europe, in Spain and Italy, in the US, which is the biggest mobile market, in Canada, and I'm particularly proud because I know the potential of this market and how fast it's going to develop, and you all know it, in India. So when we came to India, we were looking for a perfect partner. Someone who knows the mobile ecosystem really well, a mobile specialist, but also someone who might have already had contact with the telcos and know how they tick and know what their data can do, and we found that partner. And we found the partner in Moge, and you all know Sandeep. Moge is driving a crazy amount of campaigns every month with a lot of clients and is doing mobile for a long time. And I think even in this case, it also started way before Moge was founded and in Densu and all the other projects that you had before. And we together founded a, a joint venture, Moseo. So Moseo is the first and also the only company in India that has deterministic telecom data at scale. So today I'm very proud to announce, and I think also some of our partners in the room, that tonight we are going live with Vodafone, 
We are also going live with Aircell. And until end of this year, we have two more operators in the pipeline who will be going live until then, which in India alone will give us access to more than half the smartphone population, namely 104 million data profiles. So I'm sure you want to know what we can do with the data. So what data do we have? What are we talking about? First of all, we have ARPU data. That means we know how much every subscriber is spending per month on their telco contract. All anonymized, all of these data attributes, right? So obviously someone who spends $10 per month on their mobile contract probably has a lower income than someone who spends 50 or $100. And it's so useful because it's a great proxy for income. And premium brands can only target those people who have a high income. And of course, there's also many products that are targeted at people who you know, have to be able to afford them and who are mass products. Number one. Number two, device data. So I know, and you all know, that in mobile advertising, we can know from the ad impression what current device someone is using. iPhone 6, Samsung 7, Blackberry, whatever. But we know more than that because we know the history of the mobile phone someone has owned, obviously. So we know if someone has transi transitioned from an iPhone 4 to an iPhone 5 to an iPhone 6, they are obviously loyal iPhone users, right? Or they have gone from a Blackberry to a Samsung to an iPhone, so they might not be so loyal. So if you are working with or for a mobile producer, it makes a lot of sense to use that data. And more than that, we also know when they change. So if someone is an early adapter, they might have gotten the newest iPhone right away and they have changed phones every nine, 10 months. And other people might have changed after 18. So we can tell you from the history, when is the best possible time to target a user for a new phone or any accessories or products you think might go well with that buying cycle. Thirdly, we have location data. Now again, you can get location from the mobile ad impression, right? But what many people don't know, it's the data from the cell towers. And the cell towers are built in a way that they redistribute the traffic load onto all cell towers in the region. That means that if in Mumbai, if all of you are right now tweeting to the conference and a lot of other people are on calls, you might be registered somewhere outside of Mumbai because your phone is automatically using that cell tower. So we have much more precise information and we know the home location of the user and we also know the work location. So if you want to target them at work during work times, you can do that. If you're a retailer who wants them to come to you in the morning before work, you can do that because you know their home location and you know their work location. Fourthly, and this is also location data, we know about roaming. So we don't only know who is a frequent traveler and who is an international traveler and who is a local travia, traveler in India. But switch your phone from the plane mode on again. We know that you just switched your phone on and that you are just currently roaming in Mumbai or in Delhi or wherever you are. So that means the moment you are opening your phone again, and I learned today that 70% of people are not booking a return flight right now. That means that 70% of people are coming to the city, to any city really, and they might still need a hotel, they might still need to book their flight back, and they might certainly still need additional services like Uber or Ola, you name it. The fifth data point is browsing behavior. So we know a lot about interests, you can imagine. You're browsing your apps, we know what apps you have, it all gets anonymized, but we are creating clusters of people who like certain things, right? Who likes golf, who likes ballet, who likes the opera, whatever. And the last one is we have deterministic demographic data. What's special about this is that it's from the contract, right? Because we enter our birth date when we sign up for the telco operator and we also enter our gender. So the other data that is currently out in the market usually is not that precise, but usually it's built from panels and the panels are extrapolated, so it's probabilistic. We are calculating a probability, but a premium brand that's targeting women will not want to undergo that risk and we can increase the efficiency by using this deterministic data.
So what can we do with it? We have gone through this, mobile targeting. This is a revolution in mobile because currently we have not been able to do it. I've brought you a quick example from Spain. So obviously when Mercedes was entering Spain with the new E-Class, they wanted to typically reach men because they're still more, more common car buyers. I hope it changes soon. They wanted to uh, reach men above four years and they also obviously wanted to reach men with a high income. So we could make that possible with the data and the result spoke for itself. So compared to any other campaign they had driven, we had 230% more click-through rate on this one. And there's a lot more examples. The second thing we can do is audience verification and mobile strategy. Because now I imagine without data, if you're driving a mobile campaign, who can possibly tell you who you have reached? Who can possibly tell you who has clicked? If we're driving a campaign together, we will give you a report that will say you have reached so and so many women aged between 25 and 45 in the Mumbai area. And those are the people who actually clicked it. So right now, if you get a report, even if there's demographic data inside of it, it cannot possibly be that precise. So if you base decisions based on that and you develop your mobile strategy based on the current status, you might make wrong decisions because the database is not there. And we are changing this. So all in all, this is the reason why we are so happy to bring this data to all of you. Because it truly, in mobile, changes everything. Think about programmatic. Programmatic cannot live without data. In a lot of countries, publishers have gone and they've just given a little bit of inventory into programmatic, the rest of the inventory. Why? Because programmatic is built to match inventory with data to give you an audience. So this is how we can change and drive the market together. And now I'm really excited to get part of the team who is here today up to the stage to introduce them to you. So please give a warm welcome to the chairman of Moge and Museo, Sandeep Goyal. To our director of sales, Siddharth. To our head of product for Museo, Niraj, whom you might also know from Moge. To Tabriz, who is our executive vice president. To my fellow colleagues from Ziotap, Nikunj, who is heading the telco product from our side. And Vishal, who has been indispensable in acquiring the telco data. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the team, Mozio. Could we hear it out loud for them? Thank you, Oliver Candice, for taking us through the presentation and all the very best for the future. Moving on to our partner, ABs, please, and immediately we roll into the awards, what we all are waiting for. Continue to tweet about tonight using hashtag the Maddies. That is hashtag the Maddies. Could we have the partner, ABs, please? Thank you. 